Hey guys, Techation, we're back with more vintage headphones. Today we got something special for the Sennheiser fans. Uh, if you're a Sennheiser fan, you probably know about this. This is the uh, Sennheiser 50th Anniversary Limited Edition Reissue HD414 Headphone. Pretty special headphone uh, for the Sennheiser fans. Uh, if, you, if you're not a Sennheiser fan, if you don't know anything about them, this was the first ever Sennheiser made, first ever Sennheiser manufactured. This is the HD414. Pretty significant headphone for Sennheiser, pretty significant headphone for the fans, but this headphone has a tragic history behind it. And to understand the tragic history, you have to go back, way back. Uh, Sennheiser, Fritz Sennheiser, the founder of Sennheiser, you know, uh, engineer by, by degree, uh, but a businessman at heart, uh, really had a strong affinity towards making money. He was a businessman, you know, his motto was making money. He did not care about friendships, he did not care about innovation as much as he did care about money. So uh, Fritz Sennheiser, you know, was really always, he really lobbied uh, his, his, you know, his, his workers to, you know, make something that will, you know, earn Sennheiser a lot of, lot of cash. Sennheiser, you know, uh, from the 1940s up, you know, all the way up to the 1950s and mid 50s, they manufactured voltmeters and stuff like that. And they were into the electronic part of things. They were now into the acoustic part of things. So Sennheiser was an exclusive manufacturer for those things in Germany and they were doing pretty good for themselves but again as I said Sennheiser is a businessman he wanted to expand so he basically turned his back on two of his best friends and those two best friends are obviously Jörg Neumann and Eugen Bayer. If you don't know who Jörg Neumann is he's the founder of uh, Neumann. Uh, Neumann is the world's biggest manufacturer one of the most prestigious mi microphone manufacturers and Eugen Bayer obviously from Biodynamic. So Sennheiser, uh, you know, businessman, uh, turned his back on these his, his two good friends. Let me explain the relationship between Jörg Neumann and Eugen Bayer. First of all, Eugen Bayer, you know, one of the best, uh, one of the he's the father of audio, headphone audio at least, yeah, uh, a true inventor. He had a pact with Jörg Neumann that Eugen Bayer will never manufacture condenser microphones and Neumann will never ma uh, manufacture dynamic microphones and there was a pact which was honored until the death of Eugen Bayer. So th th you know this is this is world class friendship you know because it's very hard you know when you're competing against each other and you know your two best friends it's very hard to you know keep the pact going even though it's a pact it's very hard to keep that going until you know v you know with time but they did they successfully did. Now Sennheiser did not have a pact with Biodynamic or Eugen Bayer specifically but you know there are some things you know you know these three guys they were friends or right? so there was a, a mutual understanding between Jörg Neumann and Eugen Bayer but not between uh, Fritz Sennheiser and Eugen Bayer and Jörg Neumann so Eugen Bayer who basically you know completely ripped off biodynamic uh, the electrodynamic uh, structure of the HD414 is a complete copy of the electrodynamic system uh, Eugen Bayer worked with back in the 1920s with Edward Wente at Bell Labs uh, that's the time when Alexander Graham Bell was was there, you know, d during the Bell Lab days. So that's a that's a long time ago, and Eugen Bayer was responsible for making electrodynamic systems at that time. He also worked on a couple of electrostatic systems with Edward Wente, which were again, you know, the the references go back to 1920. So before Stax, before Sennheiser, they made any other electrostatic stuff. Eugen Bayer and Edward C. Wente were working on electrostatic and electrodynamic systems. The HD414 is basically a complete ripoff of the electrodynamic system they created back in the 1920s and the polymeric revolution electrodynamic shift that we saw in the 1960s by the DT100 and the DT150 again introduced by Biodynamic. So what is the uh, HD414? It's a pretty interesting question you know. Uh, you know, it's very hard to judge this headphone. I mean, I have nothing against against uh, Fritz Sennheiser, but you know, he he turned his back on his best friends. You know, those two guys were true in inventors. Fritz Sennheiser was not. He was a he was a traitor, uh, in, in a way. And I know that sounds very harsh, but it's true, and it's my responsibility to share such experiences with you guys, because people who know about this story, they're almost dead, and they are retired, and they will never you know they will never get a chance to. You know, speak up about this. So uh, the reason I'm you know sharing the story with you guys, which I learned from a uh, respected people, is because you know I, I want to keep 
you know you have to remember that the Sennheiser's foundation was started uh, you know with the lack of trust with the lack of you know I'm just going loyalty you know loyalty lack of loyalty lack of everything else Sennheiser started the company they started in a wrong motive and that's what they are right now they, they Fritz Sennheiser wanted a big corporation and they are the, they're private owned but still they are a big you know big company and uh, this the, the foundation that they started with was always you know was always wrong and uh, you know not many people know about this so the hd414 is an example of that uh, of that mentality fritz and azar had and uh, if you think about it, this headphone <laughs> will, will not seem as significant as as it was if you if you didn't you know hear about the story let's talk about the headphone anyway uh, this is my pair uh, this is the limited edition 50th anniversary the stock the original 414 sold over 10 million units so it's not a particularly re particularly rare headphone when Sennheiser discontinued people got mad just like people got mad when Sony discontinued the V6 so Sennheiser said okay okay we're not discontinuing it we'll make a, uh, a limited edition model before we absolutely kill it and that was this this was the 50th anniversary limited edition HD414 I don't know exactly how many units were made but you know this is not exactly I'm not gonna say it's really stupid rare it's not uh, but it is rare and it hard it, it you know shows up from time to time but not as much as the stock 414 does so you know that's something different about this uh, 414 another thing that is different about this 414 is the design the original 414 is white in color it had a uh, uh, yellow and white uh, yellow and black I think strain reliefs now it's red and black the cable was steel now you have o OFC cables you obviously have the uh, the golden uh, branding which in, uh, you know signifies the 50th anniversary you also have Fritz and as a sen uh, signature printed on top uh, which is again a sign that it's a 50th anniversary anything you see in black it's the 50th anniversary edition so 414 uh, it, impedance of this guy is 2000 ohms very sensitive but high impedance I've also put uh, 3d printed uh, ASI cups to accommodate uh, Xiaomi Mi uh, leather pads which is very comfortable the original pads are foam pads not very comfortable they wear out easily and they're just you know bare foam so it's not particularly nice to have against your ear so I put these foam uh, mem memory foam uh, leather pads very soft very nice uh, and obviously you know you, you cannot fit them because there's no bezel to you know work your way around so I had to 3d print this uh, this uh, small ring other than that very comfortable headphone uh, i really like it i also put yps system so i uh, can you know eliminate the stress on the springs and this main stress comes from the 3.5 which you can al al always replace not a big deal overall great headphone sounds really good you know if you correct this it sounds actually better than the 650 600 sennheiser you know if you co properly correct it sennheiser also says you know world's first open back headphone <laughs> they can say wh whatever they want but that's that's not true you know they also um, say a couple of things about this headphone which is absolutely false so don't believe this headphone in terms of what it is but it's a significant headphone for Sennheiser it's a significant headphone for the fans first Sennheiser ever manufactured HD414 this is the father of all Sennheiser headphones pretty cool about that you know again it's a tragic history behind it you know Sennheiser again Fritz Sennheiser was <laughs> you know I don't have a lot of respect for Sennheiser personally uh, but you know it's a story you know interesting to know what the mentality uh, Fritz Sennheiser had you know it's pretty interesting if you think about it so you know the real heroes in this world in this headphone world are Eugen Bayer obviously the AKG engineers again genius people and Jörg Neumann you know who was again who gave voice to the modern era of, of, of uh, music so Sennheiser obviously you know not anywhere close to the legendary status of those people Fritz Sennheiser is nowhere close to those people but you know this is a pretty special headphone indeed and I I'm a headphone guy I appreciate all kinds of headphones even though the history you know is terrible I, I, I like this headphone I'll keep this headphone around you know with me in my collection I really like it take it easy and uh, like always have a good one because we have a lot of vintages coming up <laughs> anyway take it easy and like always have a good one I said that two times, shit.